Although it's tucked away in the bottom of Central America, El Salvador is often forgotten by overlanding tourists. As if that weren't bad enough, the country is awash with Mayan ruins and smoldering volcanoes, as well as quaint Spanish colonial towns nestled in flower-filled valleys and vast lengths of surf-friendly Pacific coast. If you've got a few days, you can see the most gorgeous sights in New Jersey's size. Tazumal Archaeologists estimate that Tazumal was first populated approximately 5000 BCE and abandoned in the 13th century, making it El Salvador's most spectacular Mayan ruin. Extensive restoration work was done on the complex's ruin in the 1940s and 1950s, but a large portion of the site remains unexplored. As a major trading hub, Tazumal is thought to have been known as the pyramid where the victims were burned, in the quiche language. The on-site museum provides an opportunity to learn about the Maya civilization's history. The beach is known as El Tonco. The waves on the pebbly black beach are greatest early in the morning in this trendy two-street coastal town popular with travelers and surfers. When the tide is low, take a stroll through the charming alleys or explore the beach caves. Salvadorans and tourists alike flock to Playa El Tonco which is constantly crowded at weekends. Don't miss out on the beautiful sunsets that occur every night. People can get fairly wild in the pubs at night. The atmosphere is fantastic. Suchitoto. The colonial architecture of Suchitoto is one of the few remaining in El Salvador. The laid-back atmosphere, stunning views and cobblestone streets of this town make it one of the most attractive in the country. The Museo de los Recuerdos Alejandro Cotto, admission $4, is one of Suchitoto's most popular attractions. Explore the lovely grounds, colonial architecture, and stunning views of the city from the top of the fountains at this historic site. This museum, which is open to the public every day, has one of the most significant art collections in the country. A beach called Playa El Espino. There are many beaches in El Salvador that are slimy and brown with muscovado waste. Instead, we're talking about Espino, a swathe of palm trees and demerara sand reaching more than 12 miles, which is 20 kilometers, from the waterfall-laced Periquera Mountains to the wild, dolphin-filled bays of Jiquilisco. There are restaurants, motels, and surf shops in the village. However, Near the beach's eastern and western ends, the sand is wild and desolate, with more turtles and terns nesting and cawing than people. Lagoon of Joy Central El Salvador is a rough landscape of volcanoes, valleys, and crater lakes surrounded by dense forests. The Laguna de Alegria in the Cerro Verde Mountains, which is emerald green and iris-shaped and perched atop the Tacapa volcano, is one of the most beautiful. From the nearby community of Alegria, known as Happiness, it's just a short drive to the beach, where trails lead to hot springs and fumaroles in the forest. Kioatan. Guatemala gets all the attention when it comes to pre-Columbian ruins. The good news is that while Tikal is packed with tourists, El Salvador's other Mayan cities are practically desolate. Even though Quijotan's pyramids and ancient ball courts are only 45 minutes north of San Salvador, you'll have the place to yourself if you visit during the week. Only the chirping of toucans and tanagas may be heard in the surrounding forest, which is completely deserted. The name of the town is Santa Ana. When compared to San Salvador, the second largest city in El Salvador, Santa Ana, has an urban charm with a more laid-back vibe. Strolling through Santa Ana's neo-Gothic church, opulent theater, and the attractive main square, Park Libertad, is an excellent way to spend the day. This theater, Teatro de Santa Ana, is a must-see for anyone who wants to get a deeper look at the city of Santa Ana, and the occasional live play still takes place there. Keep an eye out for its events while in town if you're not a fan of the arts. Diablo's Gate. Although the past is fraught with death and horror, today's breathtaking scenery attracts a regular stream of visitors. In the gorgeous El Salvadoran countryside, 
Devil's Door is a rock structure made up of two enormous boulders. You can see the indigenous village of Panchimalco directly below, Lake Ilopango to the left, and the twin-peaked San Vicente volcano straight ahead, with the Pacific beyond from the viewpoint, which can be reached through a meandering pathway. More than 60 rock climbing courses, zip lining, canopy excursions, caving, and rappelling await the adventurous in this area. Waters of Ilopango. Central El Salvador currently has a turquoise stretch of fresh water where a volcano has stood 1,500 years ago. Divers and boaters flock to this dive site, which rises to a height of 1,450 feet, which is 442 meters, and is ringed by towering cliffs. The cone was fractured by an eruption between CE-410 and CE-535, resulting in the deaths and displacement of hundreds of thousands of people. After the volcano erupted, it left behind a 28 square mile or 72 square kilometers caldera. With a depth of 787 feet, which is 240 meters or more, it is a popular diving spot for locals and tourists alike. The Monte Cristo National Park. From the highest point, El Trofino, at 7,933 feet, which is 2,418 meters, to the deepest valleys. This national park is nature at its loudest. The forest floor is carpeted with mushrooms, lichens, and mosses, giving it the appearance of a long forgotten planet. The dense canopy of oak and laurel trees rises to a height of 30 meters, which is 100 feet. In spite of this, a group tour makes it simple to go there. Pumas, anteaters, spider monkeys, and coyotes are just some of the animals you might see. The presence of squirrels, porcupines, black shrew mice, and white-tailed deer is common even if you don't see them. 300 bird species, including quetzals and white-faced quails, are also found in the area. Keep an eye out for any suspicious activity. Surfing at El Esteron Beach. There's a secluded section of coastline in El Salvador that for some reason isn't as well known as the rest of the country. There is a laid-back vibe to the beach thanks to the absence of the normal mob of raucous travelers that populates the shore. In either direction, the dunes are limitless, yet they aren't quite as black as those further west. Relax on the beach in Playa El Esteron in the gorgeous but unrelenting sunshine. You'll be sipping chilled beer and lounging in a hammock as the sunset colors begin to appear. The Florentine Route. The flower route takes you through some of El Salvador's most picturesque towns and is named after the wildflowers that bloom along the wayside from November to February is prime time. You'll pass via Juaya, Ataco, Apanisa and Atuachapan on your 25 mile, 40 kilometer drive from Sonsonat. With Spanish colonial architecture, towering churches, weekend markets and lovely tiny pit stops to eat, you'll see waterfalls and coffee plantations along the journey. Self-driving gives you greater freedom, although the path is also accessible via bus. The city of Palma de Mallorca. The village of La Palma, located about two hours northwest of San Salvador, is known as the home of national artist Fernando Law. Law's use of bright colors, childlike imagery, and religious themes made La Palma a nationally recognized creative center in El Salvador. Most of the people in the town still make a living by creating art in the manner popularized by Law. Many tourists opt to stay at La Palma because of its proximity to the Honduran border. Visitors should, however, take the opportunity to explore the town's rich artistic history which is housed in an abundance of galleries and studios. You may find anything from wall art and town murals to law-inspired products, workshops, and the mosaic central park in La Palma. The Cotepec Lake. Located in the center of a volcanic crater, Lago de Cotepec, or Caldera Cotepec, is a lake. It is one of El Salvador's largest lakes, with a circumference of 10 miles. Volcanic activity erupted and collapsed about 72,000 years ago, leaving behind one of the most stunning natural landmarks in the country. The wide variety of fish sports, 
from jet skiing and scuba diving to fishing and aquatic bicycles, are offered in the pristine waters. Motorboat excursions, lake tours, and a ferry journey to Tirpan Island, located in the center of the lake, are other options. Lake tours range in price from $20 for a half hour to $50 for a full day. So which place do you find interesting to go into? How about the least interesting for you? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.